All right, so I want to introduce you to another World War II veteran who joined us uh, here in Normandy today. And obviously, this is the 80th anniversary. His name is Rondo Scharf. And he lied about his age to join the military. He was 16 years old, and he ended up fighting at that age on Iwo Jima. He's now four months shy of 97. He says he knows how lucky he is to be here today. You know, when you're in this environment and you're with so many other veterans, does it take you back, all of you? And, and, and how do you relate to each other? How does it feel to see other people who understand your history? Well, the only ones you get along with or that can understand you is you, if you're a combat vet. Like, I've got PTSD. I've had it all my life. And uh, it, it'll never go away till you're gone. And, uh, you know, as, as long as the people remember that the vets are still around, the guys feel good about it. You know, because there's some of the memories are good, some are bad, some are happy, some are sad. And so, I mean, that, that's that's all part of life. You know, Rhonda, we've we've talked to you before, and a lot of our viewers know your story. But for for those who don't, you signed up at 16. You broke the rules to get in early. Why did you do that? Well, you know, I didn't care much for high school. <laughs> Put in a couple of weeks of high school. Went down. We tried to get in. Uh, all the different services. Yeah. We had some Linko bleach, and we tried messing with our birth certificates to make them older. <laughs> Didn't work out. The guy says, hey, come back in a couple of years, kid. Yeah. So my sister gets married, and I speared a bunch of baptismal certificates off the altar. And you stole that was, baptismal certificates at your that, sister's that, wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was like a, oh, like a birth certificate. Yeah. You can make it any age you want it. Right. And uh, I told mom and dad, I says, they won't be sending me overseas till I'm probably 18 or 19 or something. Yeah. Three months, I was gone. So, at 16? Yeah, at 16. So at, at 16, you were the coxswain on a Higgins boat that was going onto the beach at Iwo. Right, LCBP. Yeah. And what happened there? Well, 9 o'clock in the morning uh, was... Uh, a bright sunny day. We were, I had I had it full throttle with the with the engine, and uh, we hit we hit something. I went over the top of the wheel, split open my sternum, busted my nose, knocked with some teeth out, and uh, I couldn't breathe. And I kept telling myself, I'm 16, I can't be having a heart attack. But I, and that's what I thought I was having a heart attack. But. Um, by the time the guys get, I ended up on a tank deck down below me, and they pulled me up on a beach and uh, wait for the medics to come and work me over, get some adrenaline, and that pretty much took care of that. The first time I got real close to a person that was dead, they dragged me through this one guy who was cut in half, and I'm thinking, talking to myself, I'm saying, what the hell am I doing here, you know? Get me through this. It's all history, and uh, I'm glad I'm here. I, I feel bad about not having some of my buddies with me because the one, one time I was at the cemetery and I was looking for a couple of my bros that I lost. And I looked down, I see him, I see Nick DiGiacomo and Frank Salata, a couple of spaghetti benders, <laughs> Italian guys. And um, I said, you know, guys, I says, I've had a chance to raise a family, enjoy life. Why don't, why don't I go down there and you guys come up. And I'm just like I'm talking to you right now. I'm looking down at him, and Frank was kind of a heavy set guy. I says, yeah, I says, you guys come up and enjoy a little bit of life, and uh, I'll go back down there, and, but don't, don't, don't take anything over 72 hours. I says, I want to come back up. So uh, it, it, it's realistic. I dream of that an awful lot, that, just that way. But your, your dreams are, your dreams are something, you know, you're, your mind, your eyes take the picture of the world. Your mind kind of devours it. And uh, the rest of it, you're, you're just lucky to, to be where you're at today. And you feel sorry for what my brothers can't be here today. God bless them. But, and, and you help other people remember their service. And I know that's really important to you. you. You talk very openly about the struggles that you had with PTSD. When you came back from the war, that didn't have a name like it does now. No, it was, com it was uh, battle fatigue. Yeah. Yeah, combat fatigue. 
Well, I had a buddy, Mel Waldo, and um, we were real close. And they, they'd send him down to Danville, Illinois. He says, Rondo, I don't want to go down there. They put him in a straitjacket and shock him. He lasted about two years, and that was the end of him. But I mean, uh, you know, it's stuff like that that, you, that that doesn't go away. It sticks in your brain. You know, you, people might think you're a little squirrely when you talk about the guys coming back up from the grave, but it's realistic to me. And uh, I'm just, I'm just lucky. Everybody, you know, a lot of the guys weren't as lucky as I was. And uh, I appreciate every day of it. And uh, I, I honor all the guys that are, I'm, I'm from the Pacific Theater, but I'm the ETO. I, I'm just honoring my brothers over here. And uh, hopefully it, it means something to them. I'll get through to them. Let me ask you one last question. When you're here with all of these brothers and people who experienced the war as you did, and also um, the subsequent wars in Korea and Vietnam, what do you think about the state of our country today? How do you feel about the, the country that you worked so hard to, to stay free, to keep free? The real truth? Yeah. I, I feel like a foreigner in my own country lots of times, and I, I don't like it. It makes my heart real heavy. and. Uh, I just hope we can pull out of this. There's too much, too much Hollywood going on in Washington all the time. The important subjects they don't cover. So the thing is, I ho I hope that uh, I hope all the guys will rally up and we'll go back and straighten it all out. <laughs> Do you think 16-year-olds would would fake their age as you did in order to go off and fight for the country today? 16-year-olds today? No, I don't think so. It, it was a diff different generation. Each generation is a little bit different. And I, I think that the, all the generations are great, but I think some of the ones they got now are a little lazy. And I, I think they got to show more pride in their country than they do. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to see that where they'll take a flag and put a drape it around them or uh, put it on top of a Jeep or something like that. You got to respect your flag, that's your country. And uh, I, I'm just hoping I never run into anything where somebody's trying to burn the flag, because I'll stop them right now. Well, I want to thank you for your service to this country, your bravery, your courage, your spirit, which is incredible. And you inspire me every time we talk. So I'm just grateful to call you my friend, Rondo. Oh, same here, girl. You're the greatest on TV. Thank you. You're the greatest going. Thank you so much. Cuter in hell. <laughs> Stay in good health, okay? Good to see him uh, earlier today. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.